I'm going to be 89, May the 11th, which is coming up. And I've been a widow for eight years. Uh, years ago, about in 1912, 1922, the average death age for a person was about 65, 68 years old. And now, the latest statistics show that it's about 80. I know I have friends that are close to 100 years old, and they're very active, you know. You try to be more active because that's where people slow down. Once they're not active, they start every day, they'll get a little slower. This is a freehand painting, an acrylic painting, which I didn't do too good on. My trees could have been better, and uh, the shed could have had windows in. Uh, after after you get, do your work, you could sit there and figure out what you should have done and didn't do. <laughs> I've had a very wonderful life. There's nothing I want to change. I've had uh, good children and uh, good grandchildren, and they they actually keep you moving. Your children and your grandchildren and your friends, you need people in the world. PSOP means Programs and Services for Older Persons. We also, um, somebody had suggested it also means Pleasing Seniors is our policy. Well, interestingly, PSOP is, we are part of the college, but not specifically funded by the college. Uh, everyone in this building is on a grant, except our assistant, uh, Susan Flew, who is the uh, uh, administrative assistant. Uh, she and I are on college funds. Everyone else in the building is on a grant through the state or the federal government or both and through uh, county and uh, city government. We do a lot of um, legislative work and uh, campaigns with legislators to pass bills that would help support our programs. But we're like other senior centers too and there's always that possibility. And programs are cut and they will be cut back this year. Funding will be but we'll do our best to continue on. I would like more people to know about this place. I would like um, it to be funded well. Um, one of my issues is I have to um, have enough money in my account all the time to pay for the things that I want to do. And sometimes there's just not enough money to do that. And it would be great if, if I didn't have to worry about that aspect and I could just show the seniors a great time. The longer you work here, the more passionate you get about helping seniors. We love our seniors. And many occasions, PSOP is their only venue to the outside world. You have to keep active because if you don't, it's just like you, you'll get to the point where you won't, if there's nobody to talk to, you won't talk to. You'll live in your own little world. We have um, quite a few people that say, I don't know what I do without this place because it gives them somewhere to go and a reason to wake up in the morning and something to put on their calendar. And we say all the time that um, a senior needs to, besides to have, just have something to do, but to feel needed and, and wanted and someone to want them for something. So we try and call them when they're not here and say, where were you? We missed you. They say it's very important even if you have someone come in a few hours a day or just to check on you or make a phone call, but you have to stay in contact with people. We help them through programs such as Senior Companions, Foster Grandparents, the uh, Retired and Senior RSVP program, things like that. There's no membership, but you have to be over 55 and walk in our front door. So and it, you, can be, you can live anywhere. In fact, we have some people from St. Louis that come over to our dances and stuff. We try to cater to St. Clair County, uh, Madison County. We have ATS. It's called our Alternative Transportation System, and that's part of uh, SWIC. 
you can get a book of bus passes, and no, I believe right now it's like 350 or four. No matter where you go, the, it's the price is the same. So even if you went three blocks to come here or all over, um, it's still the same price. But it has a wheelchair left, and it'll come pick you up at your door, and it'll drop us off at our door. And we have a lot of people that do it. I would love to talk about the activities that we have. Um, it would be better if we do almost day by day because every day is different. So if you were a senior walking into our building on a Monday, um, over here in the corner they'd be quilting. They'd be, uh, there'd be a couple guys playing euchre. Chess instruction is on Mondays. And then one of our newer things on Monday afternoons is our Wii tournaments, that they do Wii bowling and they do Wii Let's Dance. Yeah, let's See, do you've got that ball. darn curve now. Yeah. You better throw it right I don't what, go what's curve? But they're going you got it, you got it. Side. See, you got no. that thing going that way. I don't have, uh, I had a stroke. You throw it right there. What way? Just throw it right there. You got the line going that way. Straight away? Yeah, you're worse than me. What I like about the activity is just that classic example on Monday is we have the old quilters. I don't mean the old quilters people. I mean the old uh, skill of quilting. And then we have something brand new like the wee bowling. So we try and get up-and-coming activities, things that they've never done before, and but, but still trying to keep with the tradition of what they grew up with, and, and we try to honor that. The days uh, when I'm not babysitting or taking care of the kids and doing errands for them, I like to come up here and bowl. It downright gets funny at times, everybody in different conversations and different stories, and you can have a lot of fun. When Sunday comes, my plans are right away for next, on the Monday, to come up here at, at 1 o'clock and help set up and do it. Everybody works together. It's a good deal. On a Tuesday when you come in, there'll be a pinochle down here, about 50 players. Uh, you'll go into the main room, there'll be um, bingo and lunch. And then after lunch, um, there would be more pinochle. Pinochle's real big around here. <laughs> On, on Wednesdays, if you would come in here, there'd be the knitting and crochet group would be sitting over here. Um, sometimes there's a dance. On Wednesdays, we have a dance. Um, when you come here on Thursdays, they'll be playing uh, domino and buncos here. There's a, another big pinochle group. There are different pinochle players come on Thursday afternoons. A lot of people have play cards two and three times a week, especially the men. <laughs> they love to play cards and. Uh, uh, keep up with the uh, sports. Um, on Fridays you can come in there will be men's club which is retired athletes and coaches that all get together and talk about the glory days. They have a speaker. Uh, we make lunch for them and, and these guys talk more than the ladies do. Flying a new airplane, not new one, but a different airplane you know, in heavy winds. He said hey, he's got a lot of flying time in but he said I don't want to fly a new air, different airplane in that kind of weather. Oh yeah. It, uh, it's nice to be among people your own age enjoying what you have in common. Uh, I don't know what I'd do if it wasn't for the PSOP to meet good friends. Yeah, I mean, Dean has to be over at Fort Lauderdale to tomorrow, and if they'd have flew the airplane back, they wouldn't have made it. Because from, from Midland, Texas, they was planning to go to Meridian, 
uh, Mississippi, yeah. and then from there into Florida, because they wouldn't have got back to the day. Said everybody here is so nice, and I've made a lot of new friends. Make friends here, do activities, physical and mental activities here, and in addition, we have counselors on staff. So when we do have um, seniors that are depressed or have situations like that, they can call on one of our counselors. It's very private, very confidential, and it's a free service. What if you were on a desert island and nobody there? You would go bananas. You'd be ready to climb up that banana tree. <laughs> and uh, outside of that, if you have hobbies, Oh, I forgot line dancing on Wednesdays. Um, we have a big line dancing group. We also have swing dance on Monday nights. Right behind, right in front, right side, look to your left, cross and cross. Now let's do it to the other side. Relax your hips, keep your hands behind your head. Let's do it again. Relax your hips, keep your hands behind your head. Let's do it again. Relax your hips, keep your hands behind your head. I've been teaching in this program for uh, six or seven years, eight years maybe even. Um, it's, it's a, a great program. When we started, we had perhaps 12 or uh, 13 people in the class, and um, now we've got 50 or so. Uh, when they come here, they not only get physical exercise, they get mental exercise because you have to remember the steps, and also they get social uh, exercise because this particular group is very, very social. Okay, we're going to do Abba Kadabra, which starts with a vine to the right and a vine to the left. Vine to the right and vine to the left. Weights on your left foot. Vine right. Ready, vine. Right behind, right touch. Left behind, left touch. Step, kick, step, touch, step, turn, kick, step, touch. And we start again. We've had like four trips. We've had four uh, bus trips where we've all gotten together and gone on these bus trips and just had a wonderful time together. PSOP has a lot of wonderful one-day trips, plus a lot of longer-day trips. It was at the PSOP um, picnic in a park that I met my current husband. Well, we have uh, several people in the class who came in after their, their wife or uh, mate had passed away, or mostly most of the time it was because they were widowed. They come in looking for something to do. They just find out that this is some place they can go. It's a safe place for them to go. We've had a number of people who have come in and met their, their, their mate here and have gotten married. Well, one lady lost everything she had in the uh, Katrina disaster. She moved up here with her daughter and then got an apartment and then met a man at the dance class and they eventually got married. We've had three couples now that have met in line dancing and they're married now. So, you know, we got the hookup here too. I have a story about when I was teaching over at a retirement center uh, where they were quite a bit older than here. They were, uh, they were uh, in uh, assisted living and uh, in independent living, but um, uh, they asked me if I would teach a little um, ballroom class. So I was teaching a little ballroom class and one of the ladies there asked a gentleman there if he would be her partner and um, that progressed to where they were joined at the hip and they were eventually joined in matrimony. And um, they asked Bob and I, my husband and I, if we would be their um, matron of honor and their best man because we were the ones that had brought them together. And uh, he was in his 90s and she was in her late 80s. And two others in there have gotten married after meeting on the dance floor because in my opinion, nothing more attractive to a widowed man than a woman who's not looking for him in sweaty outfit that is not trying to catch a man. A lot of times, even after the class is over, 20 so of us wind up going over to a local uh, little restaurant and um, 
and get together and just talk for another maybe half an hour, 45 minutes after the class is over. So it's very, very social and it's very important for seniors to keep themselves going mentally, physically, and socially. All I could say is I appreciate every moment and all the people that you meet. You meet a stranger sometime just saying hi to them or smiling at them or helping someone in the store if they need help. And because uh, a smile doesn't cost anything or a good word or a thank you or things like that.